For those of you who went to private school, this is called an exhaust manifold. This is called a wrench. And what I'm doing here is called work. See, I'm trying to increase the horsepower of this engine, and the best way to do that is to allow the exhaust to flow more easily out of the engine. Regardless of what your grandfather said, exhaust flowing more easily is no joke. <laughs> See, the problem is the exhaust from each cylinder gets funneled into this bottleneck, which restricts the flow. You older guys know what I'm talking about. <laughs> now, a lot of guys go with bigger pipes, maybe even use one for each cylinder. These are called headers. Not like the header you took down the basement stairs. Nobody laughs at these ones. But I'm thinking, if size matters, why stop at pipes? Why not go up to something that's way bigger and used to handling hot gases? No, not your grandfather. That's right. Furnace ducts. Is it just me, or is this not one of the sharper vehicles you're likely to see in your lifetime? <laughs> That's what happens when you get all your ducks in a row. <laughs> and talk about performance. I figure I raised the horsepower by around 35,000 BTUs. Please allow me to demonstrate. The heat is on. <laughs> at the logs this week. Somebody's trying to put old man Sedgwick into a home. Not their home. Nobody wants him in their home. I'm against locking up old guys in homes, you know? I used to be all for it, but that's back in the days when it was me against them. Now I am them. Oh, Uncle Red. Yeah. Uncle Red. I got this book for old man Sedgwick, and I was hoping maybe you could drop it at Shady Acres for him. Yeah. It's called How to Tell You're Having a Medical Emergency. Well, I'll just file this over in that area. <laughs> I see, Harold, first of all, old man Sedgwick only likes books from World War I. They gotta have big pictures and a 36-point font, okay? Oh. And secondly, more importantly, he's not going to Shady Acres, Harold. If he belongs anywhere, it would be Belly Acres. <laughs> but he's not going to a home. Oh, yes, he is. No. Oh, yeah, I was talking to his son, and he said he's going. And he said it like, oh, he's going. So... <laughs> Well, that, that's not right. How old is he, anyway? Oh, he's well into his 90s. Well, so what? Lots of people in their 90s are living on their own. Oh, no, no, I was talking about the son. I'm sorry, no, no, okay. <laughs> oh, man, Sedgwick, I'm, oh. I don't know, he's... He's, he's, uh, uh, he's older than any recorded history, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how you could even consider putting old man Sedgwick into a home. Well, it's better than leaving him up there in that shack with 4,000 magazines and a space heater. <laughs> you know he talks to his lamp? That's because they're both on a dimmer. Well, thank goodness his son doesn't feel that way because he's putting him into a home. I didn't even know a son could do that. Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! Yeah. Any relative can with just cause. Really? Yeah. You know, there are days when I think you should go into a home. Well, there are days when I'd gladly go. Well, seriously, the Uncle Red, yeah. if you ever went into a home, yeah. I would visit you every day. Well, thank you, Harold, but that would kind of defeat the purpose. Receive this coupon for 300 board feet of lumber from the Mercury Creek Lumber Yard. <laughs> Every piece of lumber is a maximum length of uh, two inches. <laughs> because at Mercury Creek Lumber, we saw it first. <laughs> okay, uh, Edgar, uh, cover your. Uh, oh, never mind. Uh, okay, Mr. Green, uh, you've got 30 seconds to get uh, local explosives enthusiast Edgar Montrose to say this word. Passion. Passion. Edgar! Okay, Edgar, Edgar, if you're going to give advice to a young person to choosing their career, you'd say, find your... 
first aid kit. No, okay, okay, no. You don't just enjoy blowing things up. You have a something for it. A permit? Oh, really? Since when? Uh, tomorrow. No, I, I know. This is an exotic fruit. Red, I think the politically correct term is alternate lifestyle. No, okay, okay, no, no, no. Um, okay, if there are two people that have a very strong physical attraction, they have a lot of... Laundry. All right, you're almost out of time, Mr. Yeah. Green. Okay, 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 Edgar. Two people having a hot love affair, this is something they share. DNA. <laughs> No, Edgar, what do you need to make you happy? Hmm? A vacant building, 25 pounds of dynamite, and a noise abatement officer with a little, uh, compassion. Yes! <laughs>
It'll be a slap shot. Okay, got my gun mounted on the wheel, so I can adjust the up and down angle by just edging the car forward or back. And I can adjust the side to side angle by just turning the steering wheel. Now all I need is my automatic muffin loader, and I'm good to go. Where would we be without Eve Strauss? Vermont. Okay, the trick to the muffin feeder is to mount the hockey stick slash push rod slash ammo magazine. Hey, wait a minute, that's two minutes for slashing. <laughs> Onto the outside wall of the other front tire, but at a spot that's 90 degrees from where the gun is mounted. That way, when one goes down, the other comes up, like stocks and bonds, or pants and skirts. And it's just that easy. Remember, if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. This isn't a healthy diet. This is war. <laughs> it would have ended up there anyway. talk to you older guys who arrived at that point in life where your income should more than cover your expenses. <laughs> Not even close, is it? Huh? <laughs> now you have a choice to make. Either you work up the courage to demand the raise you deserve, or, and this is more likely, you win the lottery. <laughs> but no matter what you do, you will always want more money. Money is like food. You can never have enough. Actually, it is possible to have enough food, so money's more like beer. <laughs> or cars. When I had that 20-year-old Studebaker, I wanted a 15-year-old Rambler. When I got the Rambler, I wanted a van. When I got the van, I wanted an import, or at least a van that didn't catch fire. <laughs> so my advice is instead of focusing on your need for more money, enjoy what you have and spend it with confidence on things you want. Like, for example, my book, which is available at fine bookstores everywhere. <laughs> Remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. Seeing tonight's dinner steaming in the center of your dining room table is a Kodak moment. Seeing last week's dinner steaming in the center of your backyard is a Rothschild moment. Rothschild sewage and septic sucking services. Looks like old man Sedgwick won't be going into Shady Acres after all. I don't want to go into the details, but let's just say that somebody went down, met with the head nurse, straightened the whole thing out. <laughs> you know, it's always best when you just have a quiet word with people. Uncle Red? Yeah? Can I have a quiet word with you? No. <laughs> well, it seems somebody went down to Shady Acres Rest Home and said that old man Sedgwick was unfit resident. Why did you do that? <laughs> well, he needed somebody to stick up for him. Well, what he got was somebody who stick it to him. Oh, great, he wants to go to Shady Acres. Wants to? Yeah. Where'd you hear that one? From him. I talked to him. Did you? Well, oh, no, you know, when you try to talk to him, you can't get a word in edgeways. He goes on and on and on about everything that's bothering him. I know. Him. I hear, and then he gets into this whole other thing about some car he had about 40 years ago. And that's what old people are like. You know what that is. I mean, and this, and this is why he shouldn't be in a home. And why would he want to be in a home anyway? Because he's smart. What? you got friends there. You'll have a life there. And if there is a problem, you have people who take care of him. Oh, Harold, there's got to be another way. Well, you could take care of him. You know, if he's that keen mm -hmm. on going... <laughs> I don't think I should interfere. Well, he can't go now because you did interfere. You told him he was a sleepwalker, a pyromaniac, and a potential murderer? I may have oversold it. <laughs> oh, Red, you have to go down to Shady Acres right now and make this right. Okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. Oh, yeah, how? I'll just tell him I made a stupid mistake, okay? Okay, well, I'll go with you because if you're going to show them you're an idiot, I got proof. <laughs> Winston and Bill are going to have just a little day on the beach there. They took some backpacks and just going to enjoy the day. And Bill decided this was a good spot, so he uh, dropped out and took out some suntan lotion. It's a high UV that day. And whoa. 
You know, you want to keep your knife in another bag, I think, Bill. And Winston took his frisbee. Oh, that's unfortunate. And, and Bill doesn't have the sense of humor he used to have. He just fires and away she goes and then picked an updraft or whatever. It was all the way across the lake. And Bill finds that very funny, but Winston's out of frisbee. He says, maybe Bill should go across. Bill says, why should I bother? I don't care about a frisbee. So Winston's thinking, well, you need something to care about, so how about your backpack? There we go. So now he wants Winston to go across. Winston says, you go. And then Winston says, why don't we both go across? So, okay, so Bill takes off. He's either dancing or he's removing his shoes, and he got his shoes and socks on. But the water was just a little cooler than what Bill expected. And, no, nope, we're going to rethink that. Um, so then Winston's got an idea. He's got uh, something in his bag. Uh, that's a teddy bear. Uh, it's, uh, in his bag. Oh, yeah, this is one of those uh, self-inflating uh, rafts. So he's got to be careful with those. You gotta, but you got to stop it. When it gets full, Bill, you got to stop it. Bill, Bill. Okay, now here's a little safety message. You, any of you kids with an axe? About an hour later, Winston realized that Bill was actually making uh, stilts. So, got Winston up there, and now this looks like trouble to me. <laughs> Neither of these guys is too familiar with the concept of gravity. So then they decide maybe a picnic table would give them a little more leverage, and uh, Winston needs Bill to push him off, and then Bill loses his balance and ends up jumping right onto Winston. <laughs> So now you got a passenger, and they're heading towards heading towards the water. And uh, Winston comes right up to him and decides he's got to take a big step to go in. He raises, then hits Bill right in the face, and it was unfortunate the way this happened. And, uh, and then uh, he was out of balance, and then of course Winston falls right. Oh, oh boy! He thought it was a pole vaulting uh, exhibition. Uh, but just when they're about to give up, along comes the park ranger, and well, you know what, he's got everything in there. You know, there's the backpack first, there's your frisbee. There you go, oh! And there's your backpack. Everybody's happy. Winston, Winston. If a man's home is his castle, then his backyard is his trophy room. It's really a shrine to a lifetime of tinkering. Unfortunately, your wife may not see it that way or any other way. In fact, she doesn't want to see it at all. As I always say, out of sight, out of mind, which doesn't mean that if you need glasses, you're half crazy. What it does mean that what your wife doesn't know won't hurt you. So I mounted my tarp onto the rim of my basketball hoop, got the whole thing mounted over the barbecue. Now all I have to do is fire up the grill and we have ourselves our own disappearing trophy pile. Harold, I don't think your comments were appreciated. Oh, they were appreciated. They were essential. Okay, so we go down to the Shady Acres there, and I tell them there's been a misunderstanding about old man Sedgwick that his deficiencies were a little exaggerated, uh -huh. you know. Heck, I even put in a good word for him. You said he was the greatest man that ever lived, not 10 seconds after admitting that you had lied about him being a murderous pyromaniac. Don't you find that incredible? Harold, you and I are related. I find that incredible. <laughs> I'm not the one who's banned from Shady Acres for life. Aww. Well, I'm glad I'm banned. That means you'll never be able to stick me in there. Well, you handled it poorly. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Is old man Sedgwick in Shady Acres now? Yes, but only because I brought a completed application form, his medical records, and convincing letters from both him and his son. And what did I bring to the meeting, Harold? 
Guilty admission, some pathetic pleading, and a few veiled threats. Really, that's... No, 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 no. I brought you, Harold. You were my ace in the hole. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you. You're very welcome. That's the first time you've called me an ace in a hole. I've called you something similar. <laughs> Time. Yeah, you go ahead, Ace. I'll be down the hole in a minute. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay, if my wife is watching, I'll be coming straight home after the meeting, and I learned today that Shady Acres has refused me as a resident, so it looks like you're going to have to take care of me, and I was hoping you could start practicing tonight. <laughs> Don't forget, I'm only as old as you feel. <laughs> and to the rest of you, thanks for watching. On behalf of myself and Ace and the whole gang up here at Boston Lodge, keep your stick on the ice. All right. All right, bow your heads for the man's prayer. I am a man, but I can change. If I have to, I guess. All right, man, as you know, old man Cedric is now living at the Shady Acres rest home, and he wanted me to tell you he appreciates you guys coming over and visiting but he's starting to notice it's always at mealtime. <laughs> and the cleaning staff sent back the uh, gift basket of prunes because they say his bed is just too far from the restroom. 